Hey, you've taken the elevator and found yourself once again at Hellavella here on YouTube. And I am Azriel Lawless. And Hellavella is the channel where we talk about all things to do with Kindle Vela, the new serial reading platform from Amazon. And we talk to a lot of authors. And today we're here with author Peter Mancusi. Say hi. Hello. Hi, everyone. So, Peter, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thank you. You? I am doing wonderful. Thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, thanks for having me. I, I asked Peter to be on the show because he's got a, a really wonderful YA serial that I know about, and he's got another serial he's going to tell us about. And he also draws a lot of his own art. So I, it's very interesting to me. He's always coming up and, and posting art on uh, the Facebook groups. And I just really wanted to learn more about him and his writing. So that's why you're here today. Your, your work brought right. you here. All right. <laughs> so I'm, I ask a famous first question of every author I interview on here. And that is, when did you get started writing? Uh, I would say probably back in the early 2000s. Yeah. I started taking an online course and, uh, just took it from there. Yeah. And then I, yeah. And then I got serious about it about three or four years ago where I was planning on publishing. Well, that's and, pretty cool. Uh, that's how long I've been working on these stories actually. So, and then, so uh. 22 years right but not steady I should say you know right. like whatever life gets in the way all that and uh, yeah yeah I'd say steady for the last four years that's Definitely. great that's great what what prompted you was there a, was there a big change or was it just a natural evolution from having written the work and conceived of it or can and then then it was yeah. just natural for you to sort of push yourself into it or did something happen uh, I guess, yeah, that, well, that and age, you know, I was like, you know, if I'm going to ever, and I really enjoy it. So, you know, I figured I'm, I'm not getting any younger. If I'm going to ever try to do anything with writing, now's the time. And I've always had these stories in the back of my head. And then I just decided to finally, you know, what am I waiting for? You know, that's right. That's right. And, yeah. uh, you're in really good company. Um, I don't know if you saw the the interview yet. I just posted up a two parter with Naomi Alt. Have you seen the uh, the serial called Chew? I've seen it. I haven't uh, read any of it yet, but I've seen it. Right, right. She was she's the writer of that, and it's it's wildly yeah. popular. And yeah. Uh, yeah, and and she also taught herself to write with an online oh, okay. course like yourself. And that's yeah. what I was saying. You're in good company there. So oh, okay. Yeah. That's like a, a zombie. Is that a zombie one, I think? You know, it is, but okay. it is so different. I don't like, I don't, I don't enjoy the zombie genre. It's not my okay. thing. The undead genre is not my thing. However, this one just like grabbed me and I'm 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 hooked. I'm absolutely hooked. Because oh, okay. it's not following the zombies. It's following, right now anyway, the people who got cured oh, okay. of being zombies. And they have to remember. Go back all to the, normal. All, all the horrible. No, no, no. They remember all the horrible things they did. Like the, the, in the first episode, it's the main right. character. And she remembers eating her mother. Oh, gee. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So a lot different than yours. Well, let's talk about yours. That's <laughs> love the name. I think that's a great name, though, too. That's a really well. Good it's name. <laughs> you also find out, and this is this is not really a spoiler because you get it right in the first episode. Um, you also find out that the disease, and she's got a name for it. It's great. Um, you know, and it's not a dumb name. It's some believable name. Anyway, she's got this name for it, and. But the, the thing is, it causes terrible pain to the, the person who has it, uh, the person who's infected with the virus. It's terrible pain. And the only thing that will alleviate it 
is to chew. Oh, okay. That's interesting. And that's what it's. It, that's what drives this mindless sort of, you know, anything. You know, I just I'll eat anything. Just stop the stop the pain. Stop. You know. Okay. Yeah. That's and pretty cool. It is. It's really cool. I recommend everybody check it out because yeah. you know that way we're going to be able to say we knew Naomi Alt back when because okay. it'll be made into some kind of series. HBO right. or Netflix or somebody's got to pick this one up. It's outstanding. Even Amazon, you know, they've got a wonderful film company nowadays. Yeah. And they got some, they got some fertile shopping ground in their villa. Yeah, they do. They do. They do. And I love yours. I want to get back to yours. That's what I was. Okay. Oh. We go, <laughs> we're going to go back. We're going to go back to the stuff where people don't eat each other. That's what we want to talk about here. Is no, well, no, we got some zombies in there, but not that's not the main, uh, and then that's not the main thrust of the whole deal, right? right? Okay, all right. So, we've we've talked about when you got started writing. You said you got started writing in the early 2000s. I guess you had some desire to, I mean, you just had this desire to tell stories, and right. so you just decided to go online and get yourself some information on how to do that, right? Right, right. Right. Excellent. And so um, and then you wrote your stories over a period of like, you know, six, seven years, then decided to start publishing them. Now, you said you yeah. started to start, decided to start publishing them four or five years ago, did you say? Three or four years ago. Well, yeah, I never did, though, because I'm like, I'm not really like tech savvy. And I'm like, I don't, how am I going to self-publish? I don't know. So when Kinder Valley came out, I was like, Oh wow! All I have to do is upload it. Perfect. I don't have to. And you know, so I see. It was like I a see. godsend because it was like a Wattpad thing, you know. And I was like, "Wow, this is great." You can just, you know. Okay. Okay. So it. Uh, so the p process of putting your work out as a book, like on Kindle, that was intimidating, and you didn't yet do that. Is that what I'm hearing? Right. Right. Okay. 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 Um, yeah, I guess it uh, it kind of is intimidating because yeah. you have so to I, format I the whole business. thing. Right. And then the time is going to come where I'm going to bug people in the groups to help me do that, you know, if I ever want to print it because there's so many smart, you know, great people that know all this stuff. I'm certainly not one of them, but they can help me when I'm ready. Uh, you know? <laughs> there are plenty of wonderful wonderful people out there now right. i haven't gotten to my first book either i'm still you know i'm i'm a little i think older than a lot of you guys out there who are writing so i'm i'm running to catch up uh and i'm not i'm not to a book yet so i'm definitely gonna have to lean on you know yeah. vela vela friends quite heavily yeah but it's nice because we've got the community to do that sure sure yeah, and that's pretty unique. So you heard about Vela from where? Um, how did I hear about it? I, I think I was just, I saw an ad for like these ads, like looking for writers. And there was a couple of other companies that you had to try out. I forgot the name of them, but they're, I guess, similar. And uh, oh, I should have wrote the names, but anyway. And then somehow Kinder, someone on a board, a message board or something was like, Kindervell is better than all of these, try to eat, whatever. So I'm like, what the heck, what's Kindervell? And then I looked it up and this is in October. So it was already months into it. And unfortunately I knew, I didn't know anything about it until October. I don't know, then, Peter, it doesn't sound like we missed a whole lot. Um, Right, right. Yeah, I'm learning that they told them about it in like March or so. They let them start uploading around July, is my okay. understanding. And then, you know, with no talk of bonuses or anything like that, right? Just the just the royalties. And you've seen yeah. that. It's hard to get up to that dollar mark. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know what I mean? So anyway... So then it was that, and then they didn't announce the bonuses until August. Oh, and, okay. 
Yeah, I got in in September. You got in in October. So we missed that whole section of super frustrating stuff, you know? Wow. We got lucky. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I didn't even know about the bonus. I I wasn't, I was just happy that, oh my God, I could actually publish something. But yeah, yeah, yeah. The button. And that was enough for me. I was happy. And then when I saw the bonus, I was like, wow, where did this come from? What did I do? You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Same, same here, same here. I didn't have any idea anything was attached to it. I'm terrible about reading my my right. Kindle, Kindle mail, you know. Oh, look, there's some more Kindle mail. When you don't have active books out there, it's not right. like you're going to be reading those constantly unless yeah. you're just looking. In fact, I almost contacted that because I got a little nervous. I was like, well, I don't want all their money. This must have been some kind of mistake. <laughs> and I was going to contact them and say, look. Uh, but then I joined some of the groups and started seeing, like, okay, everyone else is getting them. So yeah. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything illegal, you know, or. Yeah. Then started the great uh, wait for the 15th and start clicking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Refresh, refresh, refresh. You know, right, right. people got really right. fast. And, you know, I've said it before we're Americans, you know? Yeah. Money. Money, money. Put that money on front of us and watch us run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Well, okay. So, so let's talk about your stories that you put up on Kindle Villa. So you found out about it in October, you decided to roll with it. Did you already have one written and ready to go? Or I had the Andrew Harper one. Mm -hmm. I had that. I'm still writing it, but I had it written. And then, uh, you know, I adjusted it for, or as best as I could to, um, like the Kindle Villa. You know, from like a, uh, I guess from a novel platform to a serial. So I made right. some adjustments, but yeah, I had a lot of it, you know, uh, right. a bulk of them actually. So, uh, and so I, I don't want to get ahead of us here. So I want to hear the name of your serial. Give me the entire name. The, the Andrew Harper one? Yeah. Oh, it's called Andrew Harper and the Guardians of Chester County. I have it written yeah. down right here, but I just, I wanted to hear you say it. Okay. Uh, so where did you come up with the idea for Andrew Harper and his, his pack of friends there? Yeah, it's funny. It, it kind of, it just grew from the other series, which from the world building part of it, because the other one's more like the history and all that. And I'm like, all of a sudden, I'm like, why am I, I'm writing about Boy Scouts now. And all of a sudden, like, what does that have to do? You know, it's this epic path of superheroes. But uh, I just, you know, it just happened and uh and be a boy well i couldn't use boy scout the term so i came up with youth troop okay good i don't think, I don't think you could legally use boy scout, you know because that's a registered or whatever trademark name yeah yeah i understand you and wouldn't want to it. anyway it's it's got you know it's it's right. freighted it's got different connotations right so he's a youth trooper and uh and that's it. And so, and how would I tie it into this whole epic battle that's been going on between the Guardians, which are superheroes, and these bad Guardians and, and whatnot? And uh, um, where am I going with this? So, oh, so you want me to tell you a little something about the story? Okay, so, yeah. so he, he was bullied into, because he's a youth, he's like kind of a nerd and a youth trooper, mm -hmm. and he's really good with camping and all that stuff. And these bullies, want to go to the forest near them to find, because uh, they believe there's a package of money there. But they don't know how to like navigate and get through the woods and all that at night. So they're like, oh, let's, let's we'll bully, we'll make Andrew Harper do it because he got a reputation, you know. Yeah, yeah, a little kid that's carrying a compass around and stuff, right? Right, right. So that's how it started. So they, so he's bullied into it and then he grabs his buddy, Stephen, and then, uh, they don't, you know, they don't know why they're going to this forest. Woody, it's called Woody Hills Park. It's mm -hmm. in, uh, my fix. It's a, it's a fictional version of the town I grew up in. And, um, you know, then they learn that there's a, a warlock that an ancient warlock that lives there. There's a portal to the underworld, which is the darkest now. So all this stuff happens. And on his way there, he bumps into his his girl that he liked, Berta, and she gives him a good luck charm. But he doesn't know it's actually a, what they call them hero callers, like where 
you can use it to summon like superheroes, guardians. Yeah. So he he doesn't think nothing of it, and he just puts it in his backpack. And anyway, they, so when they run into danger, he's like, "Do something with the charm!" And then all of a sudden, you know, he sees like a glowing light, and then they become guardians. And that's how it starts. Yeah. Ah, oh, cool. Yeah, and so and then he learns like, wait, they're, they're real because they always thought the guardians were just people wearing costumes on the news that are crazy, like trying to be. Which some of them are. Those are called the regs, but that's like a, pro wrestling, right? Exactly. And then when he saw them appear, like some of them, and he was like, "Oh my God, they're uh, they're real," you know. That's awesome. Yeah. So there's there's two sections. There's the guardians, and then there's the I call them the regs because they're more like your Batman's. Like they don't have superpowers, but they have skill and stuff. Right. And it's like a little friction between the two the two groups but they they work together when they have to right right well that's pretty cool and so how many episodes do you have of andrew harper and the guardians of chester counter uh oh my gosh i don't even remember i know the first one's finished i think it's 39 wow and the second one i have 22 po 23 posted already Wow, very good. Now tell me what's the name of the second one? Just I just call it season two, the same same name, okay. but Andrew Harper and season two. And uh great, great. All right. So yeah, no, I was I'm I was mistaken. I thought you meant there was a second serial out there for you. Uh well, no, that's the other one, the Nalandra. That's a that's a separate uh serial. Yeah. Yeah, oh, well, that, is, oh, you want to talk about that one? Okay. Yeah, let's right. talk about that one. Uh, it's called the Nalandris Chronicles. The who? <laughs> Nalandris, N A L O N D R U S Chronicles. Good. Okay. The Nalandris Chronicles. So, Nalandris, is that your world? No, it's a, well, it's a fantasy setting, but it's still, so it's, but it's not really a fantasy world. It's set in our world. It's a, a continent that once existed, kind of like Atlantis. Oh, or that's and, cool. you know, but it's like a total fantasy setting. And uh, yeah. it was originally meant for as a refugee land for beings from other planets that were rescued by these angelic beings called the Majestians. They're like the top dogs of the universe. They protect us from the outer darkness and all that. And some planets got destroyed or whatever. So they they rescue alien or whatever from different worlds and bring them to refugee worlds or whatever. And one of them happened to be ours. Something like that. Oh, that's and, uh, cool. That's cool. Right. And so, you know, rough around the Middle Ages, because um bad majestians followed them because those were the bad guys, like they felt like fallen angels. And they started imbuing people with, uh, I call it a curse gene, turning them into mutants like monsters. Mm -hmm. Be because there's this big war that's been going on between the Majestians, the bad Majestians, and these demons from the outer darkness. So the demons tell the bad Majestians, if you want to beat the good Majestians, create superpowered armies on every world. So they start spreading these mutations which turn people into like human bat hybrids, vampire, you know, all the creatures of legend. Wow. So it came to around the middle ages, the Majestians said, had a, and they were like, all right, we have to give some of these humans some kind of powers besides their swords to help fight against these, you know, monsters. And that's when they started the guard, like they imbued certain humans with superpowers. And that's how the superheroes started. That's pretty cool. So um, this is kind of like the prequel to your Guardians. It's the way, way right. back. Right, way, way back to like thousands a year, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. So the Andrew Harper story kind of grew out of that. Like it was never really planned to, you know, and then, like I said, here I am writing about these Boy Scouts running from, you know. But the war, the warlock in, in the Andrew Harper story is one of the, ancient guardians but he became bad 
and you know, and he has immortality because they have these light gems they're called that gives them immortality. And he lived on. So after the island was, the continent was destroyed, mm -hmm. and now it's just a small island. Mm -hmm. But he escaped and came to New York. Oh wow! All places, all places. yeah, like sixteen hundred. But we could never see it because they made it invisible. I went with that, you know. And the continent was was undis couldn't discover it because the Majestians hid it because they didn't want aliens from the other worlds to see the aliens that they rescued. Right, right. And plus, well, that's, of course, you know, that's a big thing. story, Peter. That yeah, is. it is. And I'm just touch, touching the iceberg, but um, tip of the iceberg. But uh, so yeah, so a lot of the villains in the Andrew Harper story come. You know, I have a witch named a witch named Horna, um, the the warlock of Woody Hills Park, that the kids first bump into. He's wow. he was a guardian back in like you know the Middle Ages, but he, you know, went the wrong way. Wow! Uh, whoa, whoa! That these are so awesome. And, so so your so audience. Andrew and his, go ahead. Do you see your audience is what what age do you see your your biggest audience? You're gonna have them all over the place, but your um, big demographic. I'm thinking for I I I advertise as family friendly, so I'm thinking maybe kids and parents. You know, like uh, maybe twelve year old, ten year olds, twelve year olds. I mean, yeah, there are some ten year olds. Yeah, there is some violent, a little violence that I, I try. That's another thing. I cut down a lot of the description of weapons, like in, in um, you know, instead of one of the villains reaching, like one of the bad guys reaching for his gun, I have him reaching for a dangerous weapon instead of saying gun, you know. I, I don't know if kids are reading it. I don't want to be too. Too descriptive. Yeah, like they don't need to know if it's a gun or, you know, just he. He reached for a dangerous weapon, but thank God, they, you know, whatever happened. You know. So I, I try not to make it too graphic. Right. In the second series, it gets a little more. Uh, you know, right. Right. A, a well, more violent. so so you've been out there putting up your velas. Have you been reading anybody's velas? Yes, I, I do. I read a uh, Problem is, there's so many. I, I can't read them. Like, I try to read as many as I can. Right. Do you have and one or two that stand out? I got a lot. Oh, oh you want, uh, yeah. Um, how many are we allowed to give out? I feel bad because there's so many that I like. Three. Three is it the limit? All right. Um, I try. I try. Okay. Um, Sable Jack. Yeah. The, the, uh, Bright, what is it? Bright Morn of Isra. Uh -huh. I've been reading that. I, I finally started reading on that. And um, that's really cool. But it's actually funny, quick story. Uh, I actually coincidentally bought a book of hers years ago on how to write screen screenwriting for fantasy. Yeah. It's called Writing the Screen. Oh, what the heck? Did I write it? Yeah, Writing the Fantasy Film. And, uh, cool. About 15 years ago, I bought this book. And, you know, so when I joined Kim Novella, I started seeing her name in there. And I'm like, this this, this name looks familiar. But I didn't think not. not. And then I'm like, oh, wait, it, it, that couldn't be the same, you know. So finally, it just I just asked her because I'm a little shy. So I just said, did you happen to write this book? And it, and it turns out it is her. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, she got uh, a history there. So... Yeah, uh, so Sable Jack and the Bright Morn of Isserus, who's yeah, next? Yeah, really cool. Um, Victoria Ro Rokas. Ro I hope I'm saying her name right. She has that trick or treaty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like trick or treaty. That one's cute. Yeah. I, I love her. Uh, well, the, the little miniature she makes. That's what really attracted me at first. Yeah. Well, we haven't think, seen your art yet. I've got to have you hold up some of your art. Oh, yeah, I will. Yeah, no. hmm? So, third one, and then we hold up art. Okay. Um, Growing Up Fairies. That's a cute one. By Ra Rachel Roy. Oh, that's cute. I, I haven't seen it. Yeah. 
it, it is. I, it's like one of those, you don't have to, it's all separate stories, but all part of a bigger one, I believe. Yeah. But it's just nice. If you want to relax and read something cute and wholesome, you know. Well, that sounds great. Yeah, it is. It's, uh, I like it. I really love it when we get shout outs and I get new novellas out of the deal, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so, that's, that's, definitely, that's definitely for kids, but it's nice. Well, I mean, no, I shouldn't say it's just for kids, but, you know, it's like about fairies. And, you know, yeah. Cute. I like it. I think it's cute. I mean, yeah. even the title is cute. So yeah. I hope it lives yeah. up to its title. Yeah, so one of the really things... Good that attracted me to you to get you on here for an interview was your art. And you've got some of your art here that I want you to show us okay. that you did for, you know, for Andrew Harper. Okay. Um, well, here's the cover of the first one. <laughs> I love that. He's really like, nothing. out of control. Quit moving it. Yeah. Here we go. Oh yeah. Okay. Just on poster board, nothing fancy, you know. I like it. I like it. I use a colander, you know, for pasta, where you drink. I use a colander for the circle to trace the. Very the nice. Yeah, for the Kindervella platform. I love it. I love it. So um, let's. Uh, you got another one? For Andrew Harper, yeah. Oh, I got tons of them. Oh, here's the other cover for the second series. Oh, there we go nice oh you're of, a very good artist thank you those are some of the artists not artists those are some of the guardians that are animals like shapeshifters oh i love it yeah and uh what else we got i got uh i might as well show the bad guys too yeah you got to give them equal uh equal here's, air time the, here. here's one of the school bullies his name is Butch. He's one of the bullies that bullies Andrew. Nice. That's the warlock. Ah, oh, he reminds yeah. me of somebody. Scrooge, maybe. Scrooge, I wanted him to look like Jack the Ripper, kind of. Yeah, know, yeah. You got that going on. That's pretty good. Thank you. And uh, one of the wolfmen and uh, another guardian traitor. Ah. Which is, you know, which is part of the main plot. Wow. The wing, uh, the wing tyrant. And, um, well, I envy you this ability for sure. There are so many of you authors out here who are so talented in so many different disciplines. I love looking to see what, what all everybody can do. It's, it's pretty neat. Um, yeah. well, well, what, what's, what's I wasn't really planning on doing this, but I noticed when I joined the groups, I'm like, everyone has these beautiful like art things, like whether they do a graphic design or so I'm like, I'm going to try this. So I went on, uh, what is that? Um, oh, it's one of those things where you make, what's it called? It's popular. They, they use it for book covers. Oh, uh, Canva. Canva. Yes. And I'm like, what? The, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I can't. I call it Canta. Do can't to do that. Yeah. Can't to do this. Can't to do that. Yeah, all I right. can't do it. <laughs> so, I, right. so I figured, you know what? I, God bless them. They, they're doing, I don't know how they're doing it. They do it great. If they're great, the graphic artists and, and whatnot. But so I'm just going to, I know how to draw. So I'm just going to sketch a scene every now and then to hopefully attract attention because I don't know what else to do. And that's how it started. Well, I think it's wonderful. I think it gives, it gives the work depth. There's so much graphic art out there that is just so eye-popping and explosive that yeah. when you get to something that's hand-drawn and rendered as beautifully as yours it it snags the eye it really does and oh, uh and holds it there so i like that and i like that um that it was done by the writer too so yeah i think it, it makes your work even more special so um, and if you've watched any of these, uh, you've seen that uh, with this Zoom app that I have here, they've got a vendetta against me now. You're supposed to be able to use Zoom for two people for as long as you want, but I guess I've gone over my, my uh, quota of videos so they see that I'm actually using it. So I'm limited now to 40 minutes 
for each session, regardless of whether I have one person or 20 people. Oh, so okay. we're going to wrap up and okay. it's going to seem abrupt, but I don't want it to. Um, I am definitely considering springing for the full version. I think I will because I do so many and it's right, getting right. to be a real drag, you know, having to cut people off. So I will right. have you back on the show for sure. How many of the Nalandris Chronicles do you have so far? Just one. Just That's one episode? Be, yeah. Oh, episodes? I have uh, 11 published right now. Okay. All right. So when you finish season one of Nalandris, I want to have you back on. We'll talk about that. And uh, that way it gets you on when I've got my full account. So the last thing, the very last thing that anybody uh, gets to say on Hella Vela interviews is, what would you say? What are you going to say to the people who are going to be clicking on your links and checking out your YA story? Yeah, you're in for a ride and you're going to love it. Every paragraph, every sentence, every punctuation. <laughs> <laughs> well that's that's pretty good that is, i like it's that fun. it's fun and safe for the for the family there's no you know like everyone can read it and enjoy it excellent well peter i've had a great time visiting with you today you and too. thank you and best of luck out there working on your cereals and keep them coming all right because we need thank a lot you. more of them you know kids need yeah. stuff to read yeah that's not traumatizing right right and there's there's enough of that stuff out there so right. anyway thank you again all right thank you take care bye-bye bye-bye